we are looking at linear mean square estimator or estimation of a random variable y from a number of random variables x okay n number of them let's say the linear mean square estimate the linear the linear mean square estimate estimate of y in terms of in terms of random variables let us say xi i equal to 1 to n is given by okay now in this case we are uh, right this is a constrained situation we are constraining the estimator to be linear is given by let's say y hat is equal to summation a i x i okay in general of course you know you can also have a plus b okay in order to make it and make it an affine estimator but then i'll take a simpler case right where, where we simply have anyway right b is also very straightforward to solve i equal to one two now what is it n okay or in other words this is a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 plus a n x n where ais are all constants where ai are all constants okay which is why this is a linear estimator okay and the idea is that we would like to solve for a1 a2 right up to an such that expectation so so the idea is our, our constants that must be determined that must be de determined such that we would like to find out these constants such that the expectation such that expectation of y minus y hat where y hat is this linear estimate of y is is as small as possible is minimum okay under the constraint that y hat is linear correct which is why which is why we are looking at these constants now, what this means is that uh, now okay let us again so to so to say determine the coefficients so they so to uh, determine the coefficients a a i is a1 to a10 a, a a1 to a n let us define the error to be e is equal to expectation y minus y hat is a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus 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 a n x n okay the whole square okay this we want to be minimum now suppose we do a partial differentiation of e with respect to some a let us say a j or a i let's say okay now let's put it as a i then what we find is this will be equal to expectation then we will have two times y minus a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 plus 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 all the way up to a n x n and the whole thing okay if you were to if you were to examine but this equation more carefully this uh, simplifies to expectation y minus a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus 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 a n x n okay into x i is equal to 0 okay i equal to 1 to n okay now what this means is right this is the is the right error in the estimate of y correct this is the error in the estimate of y in the estimate of y because this is y hat so y minus y hat is the error error in the estimate of y and what it is saying is this error is, is orthogonal to to uh, each of the each of the observed random variables xi x1 to xn right and uh, this is called the orthogonality principle for this is the orthogonality principle principle for linear linear ms mean square estimator estimators right so in general right so so this orthogonality principle right in a way if you, if you want to look at the look at the geometric interpretation right what kind of it would mean is that right if you're trying to if you have your x1 to xn right like that x3 all the way up to xn you have a y okay that is sitting somewhere up there okay and yeah and uh, and right what you're trying to do is you're trying to drop this orthogonally onto this space spanned by x1 to xn and this is your y hat right and, and this error 
okay, which you have here, this error is actually orthogonal to each of the xi's. Okay, and uh, some special cases, what will be the special cases that you might have here? Special cases will be like if a y is a vector in the span of y is in the span of well in this case a scalar random variable is in the span of x1 to xn x1 x2 up to xn then your y hat will be equal to y itself right you cannot make an error because of the fact that it lies in the span of uh, you know in the, in the span of the xi's now if y is orthogonal on the other hand at the other extreme if y is orthogonal to to the xi's then then your y hat is zero right if it is orthogonal okay now 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 in this case what you find is that through this so this principle orthogonality principle says that the right, error is orthogonal to all the xi's each of the xi's okay and therefore right this itself leads you to n number of equations if you, if you observe this equation is valid for for every i and therefore right you can write down a set of equations yeah, so so we can go ahead and write this down as from the from the earlier page. What we have is expectation y minus a one x one plus 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 a n x n into x one. It is equal to zero. Then all the way up to expectation y minus a one x one plus 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 a n x n. Right x n is equal to 0 because because the other equation is valid for i equal to 1 to n right therefore if you write down right a bunch of equations you'll get you'll get right any equations like that therefore for for uh, each of these equations right we'll get something like expectation a1 x1 xi plus a2 x2 xi plus 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 a n x n x i is equal to expectation y times x i where i goes from 1 to n okay now let suppose r j i is suppose this indicates expectation x j x i and r 0 i indicates expectation y x i okay then what we have is we can we can write down this entire thing in a matrix vector form as where the unknowns are your a1 a2 all the way up to a n these are your unknowns and we can write this as a matrix multiplying a vector is giving you a vector and this will be like so if you start with i equal to i equal to 1 right so what you will what you will have is r11 okay and then you have x2 so so now for i equal to 1 you got you, you you've got you got r11 which is expectation x1 square then you've got r21 right which will be which will be uh, which will be expectation x2 x1 and then all the way up to expectation xn x1 therefore we've got like r11 r21 all the way up to r n1 then similarly you can have r12 because when you put i equal to 2 then you'll get x1 x2 x1 x2 x1 x2 is uh, uh, so when you put x1 x2 then then uh, right that is r12 right x1 x2 is r12 then r22 you got like rn2 and then all the way down to r1n right r1n because you got to put xn here then what you get x1 xn and uh, you know x1 xn is like uh, r one n, right? X one x n is r one n, and then you go, you got r one n, and then you got r two n, all the way up to r n n. This is equal to r zero one because expectation y times x i. So y x one is y x one is zero one. Y x two is r zero two, and then all the way up to r zero n. Or in other words, if you call this as A, and if you call this as R matrix, and then this we call as R, then we got like R times A is equal to R. Or in other words, A is nothing but R inverse times R. So, so your A's, which is your A1, A2, right up to A n, right? Those can be found out. 
from this kind of a statistical information right uh, try to try to kind of solve this right and uh, okay leave it as a small little exercise right show show or find uh, find you know right linear ms mean square estimate of y okay given only x okay now what we have solved is, is a more general case solve it for the case right when you have say, x1 to xn right to so solve it for the case when okay when let's say right you have y and then you observe a, only another random variable which is x and therefore right so you need to be able to show us to what should be then your a right so, so in this case your a will be so in general right try to solve for y is equal to ax plus b okay so solve for a and b okay now in our case we didn't we chose b to be zero but uh, then right let me just uh, let me just give you give you a simple example try to estimate y from x as as ax plus b which is like an affine estimator the purely linear would have been y equal to ax now we are looking at some kind of an affine estimator so so solve for b and a okay and a such that b and a such that expectation y minus ax plus b the whole square is minimum okay this all Okay, so 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 it's a it's a it's a simpler example, okay, of the one which we have already seen. Okay, now this now this linear linear mean square estimator is actually nice to have. Okay, now we saw that we saw that it it has it of course it obeys what is called the orthogonality principle. That we said that the you see, error is orthogonal to to the to the to the observed random variables x one to x n. Now moving forward, right, we are going to look at look at something called the general orthogonality principle okay and this is with respect to the conditional mean the general orthogonality principle see as far as a linear a linear estimator is concerned we said that we said that this error that you make in the estimate of y is orthogonal to x size now the general orthogonality principle goes goes further beyond and states the following this is for nonlinear estimator. For nonlinear estimator, that means the conditional mean. Okay, and what it says is, if what it says is, if g of x is a nonlinear is a nonlinear mean square estimator. of y of y that is if g of x equal to the conditional mean of y given x then the estimation error the estimation error which is y minus y hat or y minus g of x in this case is orthogonal is orthogonal to any function okay note this to any function there 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 we only had that it is orthogonal to the x size now we are saying to any function wx linear or or nonlinear nonlinear now let me just remove the comma of the data x Okay, so it goes further beyond. So we'll we'll try to get us see prove this. Okay, what do we mean by a general orthogonality principle? So the idea is that right. So we know that uh, proof would go as follows. The proof goes as follows. Let g of x. Okay, so as has been already already stated, is the conditional mean of y given x. Let's get to put it like that. So we need to show, right? What do we have to show? We need to show that expectation y minus g of x into any guy, any this one w of x, any function of x is equal to zero for any this one w x. Right? We don't want to we don't we don't want to really constrain w of x. It could be say, any function of x, linear or nonlinear. Now examine. 
examine expectation g of x into w of x. This we know is nothing but expectation of w of x into g of x is conditional mean of y given x. Okay, and this we know is a function of is a function of x, right? I mean, okay, this one, the, the conditional mean of y. Okay, let me just scrap this. Okay, okay, and this we know is simply a function of x. Okay, and therefore this outer expectation is with respect to x. For right, this is equal to okay. If not, I mean explicitly stated, you should automatically you know infer or you should automatically know that the outer expectation is with respect to x. This we can write because of the fact that because of the fact that the, the inner integral, the inner integral here is with respect to y. We can write this as expectation of expectation of w of x into y given x. Okay. And this furthermore, right, is nothing but integral fx of x and then followed by an integral which is w of x into y f y given x dy and outside you will have dx or this in other words is double integral y into w of x into f y given x fx of x dx dy okay this is equal to so if you if you observe here right this we can write as y okay double integral y into w of x uh, w of x into joint right because you are multiplying uh, and if y given x with fx xy dx dy or this in in turn is expectation of wx into y right and hence and hence right we have the proof right which is equal to this y into c w of x right so we wanted to show that this is equal to zero that's equal to showing that expectation g of x into w of x is equal to expectation y into c w of x right which is what which is what we have proved here so hence proved okay now now at this point right what we would like to do next really is what is called what's called a normality theorem what's called the normality theorem and this theorem is the one that actually that actually you know reveals the equivalence between a linear estimator and a non-linear estimator the conditions right under which the conditional mean becomes linear right? typically we know that you know it is, it is a non-linear function of x but then under certain condition it becomes a linear function of x right which means that which means that the linear estimator is indeed indeed the the, the optimal one okay it is no longer suboptimal so we so we'll see next what is the what is the normality theorem